Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake, we're AB Data. Thanks for walking through this Alteryx Weekly Challenge with us. In this video, we're taking a look at Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 238, Ideal Gases Don't Exist. The subject of this weekly challenge is the ideal gas law. If you think back to your high school chemistry class, if you'd like to follow along, we're on the weekly challenge page on the Alteryx community under Academy and Weekly Challenge. Here we're looking at challenge number 238. If you'd like to download the start file and follow along. The start file doesn't provide any input data or any output data necessarily. Here we have screenshots of a desired user interface for an analytic app where the user can pick three of the four variables in question for the ideal gas law formula. And the result will be the fourth variable, so the one that is not selected. And part of the challenge is to build in some error handling. So if the user picks the wrong amount of checkboxes, we can instruct them to go back and pick three. So the way I've set up my Alteryx canvas, uh, here's we're looking at the base configuration of the analytic app. On the left side of the screen, highlighted in blue, these are the tools that control the user inputs and have the placeholder variables. And then on the right side of the screen, now highlighted in red, I've got the tools that uh, control the calculations for each of these four variables. So in configuration one, we're gonna solve for pressure. So we'll allow the user to input the other three variables, volume, moles, and temperature. And here we're taking a look at the formula tool to calculate pressure. If the user wants to calculate volume, they would not input any volume. So we would disable the volume user input selection. And instead, we would only expose the calculation tool container for that configuration. So now we're taking a look at configuration three, calculating moles. And lastly, configuration number four to calculate temperature. And you'll notice the only thing that's changing across these tool containers is the actual expression in the formula tool, which calculates that individual variable. So just depending on which variable we're calculating for, we'll manipulate the algebra a little bit to come up with our answer field. And then each of these four calculations flow to one reporting element on the far right side of the canvas, where we have a report text tool to just show this result to the end user. So taking a look at my base canvas, um, most of the tools on the canvas are from the interface category. So we have a very flexible user interface. Based on what the user selects, we're gonna run it down one of four paths and ultimately show a result to our end user. So we're gonna take a deep dive on the, the first part of the canvas. So the, the user inputs, so where the user is uh, checking a box indicating they would like to input this variable and then using the numeric up down tool to actually input a value. And each of these four text input tools flow to one union tool that aggregates these results from the user. Now, as we're running this in app mode, we're only gonna have three values flowing through this union tool. So the user is going to provide three, we need to find the fourth. And depending on their configuration, whether they're asking us to calculate pressure or volumes or, or the moles, um, we're going to get a different subset of variables in the workflow, and we'll handle that downstream. Before we move away from this section of the workflow, I'd like to talk about the interface tools for a moment. So first the checkbox. So we've got four of these checkbox tools on the canvas, and these allow the user to select that variable. And then these checkbox tools actually flow to many places on the Alteryx canvas. The numeric up-down tools alternatively just allow the user to control one value. And in the action card, this is where allowing the user just to replace one placeholder value. So for each of the four template values, we have a numeric up-down interface tool that allows the user to provide 
that value if they so choose to use that variable. Going back to the checkbox tools, we see all these wireless container or connections flowing all over the canvas when we select each one. And a popular destination are these error message tools at the bottom of the canvas. So part of the prompt this week was to build in some error handling for the application user. And if they select the wrong amount of checkboxes, so if they don't select any or they select all four, or they only pick one or they only pick two, if they do anything other than three, we want to instruct them to go back to the user interface and pick three. So here, uh, if we don't select any of the four checkboxes, we're going to get a, an error message that says we picked zero, we have to pick three. And that's controlled by the first error message tool. The second error message tool we see, tool number 127, calls out the one checkbox pattern. Tool 128 calls out the two, two checkbox pattern. And if we select all four, error message tool 129 to the far right there lets us know that that fact pattern has been detected in the workflow. And we need to go back and fix our selections. If we only pick three, Alteryx will allow the process to continue and it's going to render our results downstream. So how do we configure these little error message tools to call out these fact patterns? Well, as we talked about, they're connected to the checkbox tools, and this error message tool can ingest from multiple streams. So we see these number one, two, three, and four references connected to each of the error message tools. And here we're using OR statements to call out the patterns that we want to prevent the user from selecting. So here, error message 129, this is when all four checkboxes have been selected. So you'll notice that the one, two, three, and four references don't have the exclamation point in front, whereas the other error message tools do. And if we, the user selects three, then we allow them to proceed. So that's the left side of the canvas, which really dictates the, the user inputs and has some, some error handling related to that. All right, so let's talk about the different debug canvases that we see up across the right. So as we're building a flexible analytic app that can do many things, we need to test each of those scenarios. So if the user does not check the box for pressure, we would want them to provide their values for volume, moles, and temperature. And we want to take those values and pass them downstream. The text input tool, number 79 here we have on the canvas, is really just a control list that lets us know the four variables that we potentially could be trying to solve for. So in this case, we're the one that's missing from what the user provided was the ATM or the, the unit for pressure. Here, the crosstab tool will take the three given data points and put them into a structure where we can feed them into one formula tool. And this formula tool is the, the only tool with a changing configuration across the four calculation tool containers just depending on which variable we're solving for. At the end of each of these four calculation containers, we have a very simple data structure. We have a unit of measure and an answer, which is our numeric value. And here, we're just using a couple tools from the reporting category to display them nicely. So configuration one, we're solving for pressure. Configuration two, we're solving for volume. Configuration three, we're solving for moles. And configuration four, we're solving for temperature. So this is a great exercise in building a flexible user interface and having the results from those user interface selections do different things for you in your Alteryx workflow. That's the beauty of the user interface tools. Hope you enjoyed this weekly challenge review. Hope to see you next week. Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.